that unique feeling we get when we sit down and we fire up our favorite game console for a session of play. It's unmatched by some. The ability to immerse yourself in a brand new environment and play something to sometimes just get away and escape. The games are always going to be remembered as well as their stories. But what about the way that we play? The peripherals that we use for our consoles that we may not even think about that help the immersion. Maybe it's that first party peripheral that we have that is there as the developers had intended. Or maybe it's the third party peripheral that we have trying to solve a problem that the first party isn't addressing or trying to solve a problem we didn't have to begin with. Welcome to the way we play. This is a multi-part look at the peripherals we use with our consoles and what we use to immerse ourselves in the games that we love so much. Welcome back to the channel guys. How you doing? It's been a while since I've done this, uh, but i uh, got more random things you didn't know you needed. Or maybe you knew that you they existed and you don't need them, but for me, it's all about the experience and just things that I need, I think. Not really. I'm just joking around. I don't actually need it, but it is fun to have. And that is my PlayStation Analog Joystick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, at the early life of the PlayStation, they actually came out with a nice analog joystick. It's a bit of a behemoth. No, I won't lie. It is a uh, large piece of kit. But, um... It's definitely something different that you would normal than you would normally play your game with. I mean, most people were totally, completely blown away when they got the actual analog controller for the PlayStation, the little nubbies on the the controller here for the DualShock, and uh, that kind of blew people away quite significantly. But um, this this was actually. A predecessor to it so this guy here um, it, it's like a flight stick I guess is the best way to say I, I have a video where I did uh, some peripherals for my Saturn so you can kind of see the the flight stick I had for that so this was the competitor side of it this was Sony's version of the uh, analog stick now this one is kind of unique because uh, down here it actually has a toggle switch to go from digital to analog mode and I can talk more about why that's important later. But it has a full button face layout. And then each of these joysticks here have all the necessary buttons, including a hat switch, to be able to function in most of the games uh, that uh, support it. Now, there are some games that are more fun, I think, to play with this than there are uh, games that are supported. But if you're ever curious about supported games, uh, out of my... PlayStation collection that at least I could see uh, on the box that supports it are up on the top here. So Descent, Colony Wars, and Mech Warrior. So if you take a look at the back of the box, it will actually tell you on there that the analog joystick compatible symbol is on there. So if you have any one of these games, you've already got a game that uh, supports Mech Warrior. I see Mech Warrior has it on there. Uh, and then down at the bottom, I have Air Combat or Ace Combat. And these are flight simulators, you know, kind of in, uh, well, I mean, it's a pretty popular franchise for Namco. But I th personally myself think using an analog joystick actually is a lot better use of uh, playing these games rather than trying to actually play them on the PlayStation controller. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it's not something you commonly see. Mine's a little yellowed and faded, and but that's all right. It, it gets love and use, and that's what matters. So, um, as I was mentioning before, things like air combat, they don't have any note on there that says that it is uh, compatible with the analog joystick. And you could theoretically play any game with this controller because of this toggle switch I was mentioning here before. So if it's not compatible, uh, you would just switch it from the analog mode over to the digital mode. And the digital mode 
uh, treats this stick here as your D-pad. And then obviously you've got all the uh, buttons here on the face buttons, including a select and start. So you could actually play with a select and start um, button or full combination setup, just like if you had the you know regular PlayStation controller, you know, just a uh, size comparison. <laughs> pretty big. Uh, it just uh, lays all the face buttons out here and again you use the joystick instead of the little digital cross pad or whatever you want to call it here. Now I, I don't know I like this kind of stuff you know I've always been interested in playing something like this in, in a little bit different way than what you normally would end up playing it. Uh, I think there is one other game I think Vigilante 8 Second Offense maybe uses the analog joystick I'm not exactly sure I'd, I'd have to go look it up. Uh, it's not a game I own for PlayStation I own the first Vigilante 8 and uh, there's no indication on it at least on the on the back of the box that it, the analog joystick is there so I would, uh, or support is there, so I would probably need to look through the manual and see if it's in the manual or not. I can always post it in a comment below, pin comment below. But, yeah, if you guys like simulation games or mech-based games or games where you like to, you know, fly around and shoot some shit and, you know, uh, pretend you're flying an airplane, this is a, a great way to kind of get you that feeling there, you know. Uh, and again, this was a like a... I don't want to say it's a launch peripheral, but I know it was very early in the PlayStation's life. So it's kind of a shame that um, more things didn't take advantage of this kind of controller. And, you know, Sony's kind of always been that way. They've always created some really neat things, really neat peripherals. And then they tend to, I don't know, they they tend to not support it after they, they get it there. Or uh, they don't push it enough for the third-party developers to say, hey, this is a really cool thing, and I think you should do it and use it. But Sony's never that way. Sony tends to kind of put it out there and see if it gets success. If it does get some sort of success, then they continue to support it. But if it doesn't get much success, then they kind of leave it by the wayside. Personally, I can remember the PlayStation launch. I can remember all the stuff that they had out there. I never, ever, ever, ever in a store that I went into saw one of these that I can remember. So when I saw it, I told myself I had to have it. You know, again, gameplay, uh, part of the reason why I like to play on original consoles and not just through the emulation based systems is because uh, stuff like this, these peripherals here, you know, they make the game a little bit different. It's a, a different way of, of playing and having fun. And, you know, you don't, you know, everybody can use your controller and yeah, you can hook up an Xbox controller, but look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that, that this thing does not look awesome and does not look like something you would want to play a game with. Again, not clicky sticks and they have the you know rubber gates on it and all that, you know, but still, I mean, it's 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 pretty awesome. I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm I'm very happy to have it as part of my collection. And again, I recommend it as a uh something worth you know, checking out if you are into PlayStation, if you're into uh, games like what I have here, you know, flying simulation based games or uh, like mech games. Uh, again, compared to the Mission Stick and the Saturn, this is the, the PlayStation's version of the Mission Stick. And so if it's a, uh, <laughs> if it's something you got to have, it's something you got to have. So, uh, I'll quit uh, flapping my gums about it. I think I pretty much covered everything. You know, the triggers, buttons, analog, and the uh, digital modes that go along with it. So let's go ahead and jump on into the games and let's see this bad boy in action. Because I'm sure that's what you really, really want to see. I know I do. I know I want to just sit here and play with it. I don't even have a game on right now and I just still want to play with it. It's got buttons. Yeah, buttons. <laughs> I am a big kid. <laughs> I feel sorry for my wife. All right, folks, let's jump on over to the games. Okay, folks, so our first game up here is Descent. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Descent is, was a pretty popular PC game at the time. So to see it come to the PlayStation and see it come to the PlayStation with this really neat peripheral actually makes it uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, game, per se, I think, in my mind. 
So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll set ourselves up into the analog mode because this will accept it in its analog mode. And we'll jump into the game. All right, here we go. New game of Descent. Let's go with Rookie, I guess. Usually don't play as a rookie, but I'm feeling a bit uh, rookie-ish today. Yep. Nice little cutscene here. Look at that FMV video. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna skip that. I'm not into the old FMV thing. Okay, we get the mission. Press X to continue, yes. Prepare for descent. All right. So as you can see, you have a forwards and backwards movement and then a side to side movement, kind of like a, a, um, a bank. And then you have your pitch and then you have your yaw. So, it takes a minute to get used to how you're gonna, you know, move, but you're there. Obviously, when you run into enemies, you can fire. I mean, for a PlayStation game, this thing looks pretty badass, to be honest with you. So originally, when I first played this game, I played it with a PlayStation Analog controller, and it just did not have the same feeling that you get with using this analog stick. It was a lot more difficult to figure out. It, it took me a lot longer to get used to it, but once I, I plugged in this analog stick and actually used it, it made it very different. Now, I never played this on PC using a mouse and keyboard, but I can imagine that um, mouse and keyboard might be a little bit easier to use, but it's just, this feels a lot more natural than, uh, you know, playing it with a mouse and keyboard or, or a controller. I mean, I think you probably want to play with a joystick if you were on a computer. So, again, the fact that this was a PC game and it's on the PlayStation and you have this super cool peripheral to use to be able to play the game with, um, I mean, you can't go wrong. It makes it that much more fun. I mean, it's all about the experience as far as I'm concerned, and this definitely adds to the experience. Flying around in these corridors here. Finding enemies, if I can find an enemy, maybe, kind of. Yeah, maybe a door over here. One a door over there. <laughs> but we can shoot this screen here. Yeah. <laughs> Keep flying around trying to find some enemies here. Shooting the door. There we go, there's some enemies it looks like over there. We'll go over there and go see what's going on. Shoot these guys. No. Next up, we have Mech Warrior 2. Uh, I have Mech Warrior 2 on the Saturn, but I have it on the PlayStation because this is a completely different experience. Uh, playing it on the PlayStation, those of you guys who've ever played Mech Warrior 2 know that the experience definitely varies based on what system that you're playing. So if you're going to play the PlayStation 1, it's not the same experience as it is on the Saturn version of it. And the PlayStation and Saturn version 
greatly differ from what you would normally get in the PC experience. Now on the Saturn it is um, uh, connected with the mission stick so you can use the mission stick on it however I think this uh, controller layout does a lot better job of uh, you know going through as you can see you have kind of your forward and backward on your left stick as well as kind of like a strafe and then you have you know your uh, like HUD adjuster with your right stick and then you can kind of shoot and you know the hat switch will help change missiles and things like that so you can shoot your missiles or shoot your gun um, to be able to, to do it. But I mean, it's a fun kind of mech crawler, first person game if you've never played it. Again, it is going to be greatly different from what you can see on the PlayStation side compared to the Saturn and the PC. But I think that this controller, probably out of all, makes it worthwhile getting it uh, if you're a console gamer on both the PlayStation and the Saturn. It's not a very expensive game either, but uh, again, when you got a, a neat stick like this to be able to play games with, this is definitely something that you want to play with, like uh, right now, trying to blow up some, uh, uh, what do you call it, like a oil refinery or something like that, I think that's what that is. I'm not, you know, having the most successful time of doing it. Um, but control wise though on on everything it is very functional works very well and you can get uh, comfortable with how you use the controls and so that is a benefit you know for anyone who's never played the game before or anyone who's trying to get into this I can imagine that if you had you uh, used in you know just basic controller how this game may not translate as well you know as fun it kind of reminds me of playing Steel Battalion on the original Xbox. I don't have that controller, maybe someday. I just don't have the space for something that's that big. So, uh, overall fun game here. Uh, you get to destroy other enemy mechs and, you know, like that guy over there in the distance. But, um, you know, destroy buildings and wander around and crush and destroy things. And, you know, if you want to be destructive on your PlayStation, this is definitely when you can do it. And the best way to play is with this analog joystick. It makes you feel very, very happy and very, very satisfied when you destroy enemies like that. Boom. They're gone. Now time to go back over to my old refinery and destroy it. Okay, lastly we have Ace Combat 2, which is also another great game. Uh, because this game does a analog stick on it, I think we'll, we'll try the analog mode versus just the digital mode and see how that works. So let's jump right into it and see how we are doing. We'll just... <laughs> now I know what I'm doing here. All right, we'll get a little bit closer to the target here.
that'll do it for this part of the way we play. Hopefully you guys had an opportunity to take a look at some interesting peripherals for games you might not have known had existed as a new way to immerse yourself in a game you might be interested in playing. Hopefully we'll see you guys in a future episode. And if you like anything you saw, always please leave a comment in the comment section below. Take care.